Okay, so I wanted to ask us about your career, and so how did you get into bioinformatics? In so, um, well, I first, I suppose I, first thing, decision I made was I really liked science, and I decided at in school that I wanted to study science. And while I was here, I got interested in genetics, so I joined the genetics department here in Trinity. And within this department, we got quite a good core of bioinformatics researchers. And um, I suppose the turning point for me was I did a summer, little summer project one year, and that's when I really got to see something I hadn't seen before. It was really, I suppose I found it really fun to, to be able to But the, the, the computational side, you were interested in computers or you're just interested in the biology and somebody um, made you use them? I wouldn't have called myself a big computers person before. I mean, I, I didn't have that computer anxiety that some people have. Like when we did programming courses, I enjoyed it a bit, but I wasn't really big into computers. So I suppose it wasn't a completely obvious thing. Or even maths and stats. Yeah, yeah I like maths, I suppose that was part of it. But I suppose one of the things about bioinformatics is there's kind of a, an immediacy. You can have an idea and you can test it and see the answer quite quickly. Um, you don't have to yeah. do, like, do lots and lots and lots of work. So you kind of... You, it's, it's that. And so after that, so then you stayed here yeah, for your PhD? Yeah, I did a PhD here with Ken Wolf and um, that was on... Uh, vertebrate genome sequences, especially looking at genome duplication, this hypothesis that had existed for a long time. And just at that time, the human genome sequence was just being released. And so we were just getting, at that time, the data that we could test this hypothesis. And so we got involved in that. We got an early look at the sequence data and um, we started testing this hypothesis. So it was an exciting time. It was really exciting, yeah, it was really nice. And then after that, did you go, you, I, they let you out of Trinity eventually? Yes, for a little while. <laughs> um, I went to California and I did a postdoc there with a guy called Brandon Gott in um, a place called Irvine, which mm. is uh, where they filmed Planet of the Apes with uh, Charlton Heston because it used to be swamp, but now there's a university there. And um, it's right near Disneyland and the beach, Orange County and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so that was nice. And then you came back? Yeah, yeah, I came, came back, back to here. Trinity, yeah, I came back to Trinity. Let you back in again. Yeah, yeah. So this is probably my home. I'm institutionalized at this point. <laughs> but um, yeah, I like it. I think I, I like this department as well. It's a nice, nice atmosphere, good, um, kind of very encouraging atmosphere. So, like so if a student was interested in genome sequences and DNA sequences, what would you recommend that, you know, an undergraduate student, for example? Um, I think the, really the first thing, I think, to, to really get a feeling for it and to see how much you like it is to try and do a short-term project. So something like a summer project or maybe if there's a research project as part of your degree, try and have a look at that. And um, a summer project is a very easy one to do, especially um, because the costs for the hosting lab aren't significant like they are for, say, an experimental project. And so it's it's usually quite easy so to get them to take you on. Ideas, you know? Yeah, but also, you know, if you come along and you're enthusiastic, um, somebody can say, oh yeah, I'll take a chance on that person. They, you know, yeah. they, it's not such a huge financial investment. So okay. it's a good way to see if you like it. Yes. And the, But, uh, I mean, should you do mathematics or programming courses, those sorts of things, because m many biochemistry courses don't include don't a lot include of that, that sort well, of um, composition. Yeah, but I think, so I was largely self-taught and it worked okay. I mean, I had um, a, a small course in programming in really early years in college, but I didn't at the time feel like I learned much from it, although in retrospect I kind of think I... Uh, learned how to approach that kind of thing and then ultimately I, I taught myself the programming language that I use now. But I think um, in terms of maths it is good to be able to think mathematically, to, 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 to understand numbers let's say. Um, it's not heavy duty maths deriving formulae and theorems and stuff but yeah. you know... Um, and so it's not like any sort of on a oh, fourth year maths and stats or something like that. Well, yeah, it's, a, it's just an, uh, an interest in that. Yeah and a, 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 say a comfort with numbers mm. I'd put it that way. Yeah. And then in the choice, yeah. often students ask the choice between a master's project and a PhD project, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah, so yeah. have you seen a lot of, uh, have you seen many master's courses that are useful for getting into, uh, into a field? Um, or you just say, go and do of, a PhD? Yeah. And so. In terms of bioinformatics, I don't know any master's course I'd actually recommend. Hope UCG doesn't have one that's feeling offended right now. <laughs> no, we it's, don't. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's, it's because... Uh, um, I think there's a difference between just being kind of getting a, a load of techniques thrown at you yep. and actually learning them by using them. Okay, and, and also um, owning a project, which yeah, you do in yeah, a, and a get, proper getting PhD. more uh, motivated, more enthusiastic about it. Because uh, um, no, I think it's the same. If somebody tried to teach you a load of lab techniques and go, look, this is how you run a gel and this is how you do this, but there's absolutely no purpose to what you're doing, it's very hard to keep your motivation going. So if you've got a load of little bioinformatics 
projects that are teaching you a skill, but you don't get to use that skill mm -hmm. in a, in a it way It doesn't that create something. So yeah. you obviously think that bioinformatics has a future as well. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so it is the future. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, you know, the rate at which things are being sequenced. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Sequenced, thousands of human genomes are now being sequenced. Yeah, but with bioinformatics, and the same with, I suppose, with any kind of science, you do need to update your skills all the time because the type of data we get changes all the time. And, um, and the thing is, as all kinds of science, all kinds of molecular biology are getting more and more high throughput. Yeah. And that means people are generating loads and loads of data. So protein structure data, genome sequence data, then we've got this kind of metagenomics where people are, say, you know, se sequencing what, what are all the things living in your intestine and they're just throwing it all together and trying to analyze that. And, um, with all of these things, people are always collecting all these data with maybe one or two questions in mind. But there's so many other questions you can ask of the same data, and um, it's, it's almost a crime not to ask those questions now that it's possible. So there's all this, it's like yeah. a resource that you can yeah. use, you can mine. Absolutely, it. and there'll always be more questions to ask, and there's, there's more and more data generated all the time, and more and more different types of data. So you need to always adapt yourself to, to analyzing these new kinds of data. But that's kind of the fun as well. I think it'd be very boring if you're doing the same thing every day. For, for until you're, 40 years yeah. of biochemistry yeah. in a wet laboratory. Clocking in until you're 65. <laughs> no, no, that's true. Science is always changing. Yeah, that's, that's the good part, yeah. Okay.